Hello friends, today I'll be making a doll inspired by the Disneyland mascot Duffy. I made this doll as a gift for a co-worker. She's a fan of Duffy and her ex-partner threw away her collection of Duffy bears so I thought that this would be a cute present. I needed to make this doll pretty quickly so I wanted to use a doll that didn't need a lot of prep. This apple white suits my design. Her hair is full of glue though so I need to remove that. This is the product that I used to remove glue from the hair. Fabric softener won't work to remove glue from a doll's hair. It will work to detangle, but you need to use a glue remover product. After I washed the glue remover product out of her hair, I removed her factory paint using acetone. This doll makes me kind of sad um, and I've been asked quite a lot recently why I'm leaving Japan, so I'm going to use this video as a way to kind of cathart <laughs> and um, kind of explain my well some of my experience in Japan I'm gonna put a mark on the screen if you don't want to listen to this so like turn your sound off now put on your favorite song and then I'll flash on the screen when it's safe to listen again without my sadness I'm gonna try to be very very careful with my wording here because I don't want anybody to think that I have an issue with people that are of Japanese descent I have a huge problem with parts of the culture I think that there are some huge problems in every culture but these are just some issues that I've experienced while living in Japan this is all based on my own personal experience and these are my opinions so if you absolutely love Japan please don't let this seem that I'm saying that you're wrong this is just the things that have happened to me if you have a dream dream of visiting Japan, I still do encourage you to do that. Japan is very different for a vacation than it is to live in. So many of you know that I've been living here in Japan for the last seven years and at the end of this month I'll be moving back to Europe and I'm both terrified and really excited. There are so many reasons that I'm leaving and I'm going to try and explain them. So I've, I've been let go of my last three jobs. Job security in Japan for people like me, I'm, I'm going to say just foreigners here is non-existent basically. I w work pretty hard and I wasn't let go due to anything that I can really say was my fault in terms of job performance and I do think a lot of it was personal. So the first job that I was let go from, my senpai broke my arm and I had to take time off because of that and that's what led to them not renewing my contract. The second job that I was let go from, I was verbally offered a contract and then 28 days before that contract was due to start, I was handed a letter in formal Japanese saying that they weren't going to continue my contract. This company had translators on the payroll as well and they didn't translate this letter for me. They handed it me in formal Japanese that even Google Translate can't understand, so I had no chance there. When I asked them about this, they wouldn't speak to me without a Japanese-speaking lawyer, and obviously lawyers cost a lot of money and I've just been fired, so I can't get that. I don't actually think that's legal, to be honest, but yeah, they wouldn't tell me why. They wouldn't talk to me at all about that one. And then the most recent job that I was let go from, this was while the current health issues were ongoing. We were not provided with any PPE at all, and the students that were attending were all the children of doctors that were working in hospitals where patients were being treated so we were 100% exposed. Don't believe the figures that are coming out of Japan in terms of either because the people inside of Japan don't believe it and the way that people who are testing positive are being treated is absolutely appalling. I'll link some articles in the description box. We had to work extra long hours during this time. This was a huge strain, it was like a new job to, to me so I was having to move classes all the time and I think one of the things that people will tell you is that the most rewarding part of the job here in Japan is the, the kids because the bureaucracy and the work culture is so difficult. At that particular job, I was working 15 hours of unpaid overtime every week on top of a two hour a day commute. And I was exhausted and heartbroken and really struggling because I wasn't able to make this connection with the kids. My coworkers as well weren't particularly nice. Like bullying in the workplace is so widespread that they have a specific word for workplace bullying, Pawahara, and I hate to say this but I've experienced some form of it in, in every job that I've worked in. So particularly when you're new, there's the senpai kohai relationship that I think a lot of Japan fans have heard of, but it's not the thing that 
happens in anime, like where the senpai looks after you and you look up to them. What happens in the workplace is that the kohai has to do all the horrible jobs at work and the rest of the employees won't really give you support. And I, I really struggled with this, especially at my most recent job. In fact, the co-worker that I made this doll for, I know now that she was talking behind my back and trying to get me fired, which really breaks my heart and which is why I decided to make this entire video kind of all of my sadness because I can't look at this doll and separate the situation that I went through and although I do think this doll turned out beautifully I'm, I'm still just heartbroken by the situation. So the exact words that this company said were that they can't support me and that I can work the rest of my probation and then I have to finish to which I said I will not be working the rest of my probation but they can pay me. I didn't think that that was appropriate whatsoever especially when you're working with children why would you fire someone and then expect them to come back to work for you. There's no way that I could have provided any level of care at that job after having been treated so badly and told that I was losing my job. I had just turned 26 when I moved to Japan, so now you all know my age. And life is very different at 26, so it's a much easier to have a friendship group. A little bit after that, people start marrying. So this is quite horrible, but in Japan, women who are older than 25 are known as Christmas cake, because who wants Christmas cake after the 25th? So gross. But I have said in a previous video that I'm not a woman but Japan treats me as though I am one and I think this is part of the issue as well because I'm not a woman and I don't act like a woman they think that I'm aggressive or angry and the behaviors that I do are not out of the realm of possibility for a regular human like I, I am outspoken and I do stand up for myself and my co-workers but that's not normal for a woman in Japanese workplaces as well women are always in my experience given more work so my first job here was with a huge the biggest in, fa in Japan in fact English conversation school and my other foreign co-worker was male and I would always be given jobs to the point that anything that needed to be done it would be me doing them just stupid things like envelope stuffing or I was never allowed to not be given a job by the school and I had to find other time to do my own work preparation. However, my male co-worker was not given jobs. So he would literally just sit opposite me on the table and chat to me while I had to do the stupid jobs that I've been given. And I couldn't ask him to help me because then I would get in trouble. I got on really well with this co-worker and I would regularly ask him if I was being treated differently and if my reactions were appropriate to how I was being treated and he'd always agree with me that I was being treated differently and that I was right to be angry about it. Women are also expected to do traditionally feminine jobs such as party planning or serving tea and things like that and to be honest obviously gender roles do really bother me and this got under my skin but this is just true of everything in Japan. Men and women Women are treated so differently like I said in a previous video that I'm sometimes read as male and out on the street if I'm read as male I'm treated so much better like people will step out of my way or hold doors open for me or apologize if they bump into me but when I'm read as female none of that happens people will walk straight into me I have to literally stand and wait behind people to look at something in the supermarket and the disparity is really soul crushing especially for somebody that isn't a female like I think if I got the female benefits because there are definitely benefits to being female then I might look at it differently but I don't in terms of a support system I basically don't have one like it's it's very hard to make friends after a point and so I could make friends with a lot of the younger people that, that are coming into Japan but that's not happening now because of their health situation and so loads of my friends are now married and obviously their families take precedence um, and then I have just been on my own lonely <laughs> for nearly two years now. Dolls completely filled that void so it's nearly my one year anniversary on YouTube, it's my one year repaint anniversary and before that I was so lonely and I didn't really have anything to do, I was playing more video games. I used to enjoy going out drinking as well which I just don't do anymore because I'll be going alone which is relatively safe but Japanese people will blatantly in front of you in very clear speech make fun of me. I don't know if this is a universal experience, I get stared at a lot, I think that's quite universal, but I don't like 
people saying horrible things about me in front of me in my hearing like I don't think anybody does I don't think that they understand that I do speak Japanese and I understand what they're saying and it, it really just hurts <laughs> Making friends with non-foreigners in Japan, so people that grew up here, is difficult as well because of the hone tate mai thing. You, you, you spend years and years having just conversations about the weather before you know anything about them. Like I've lived where I am for four years now. I'm down a little alleyway and there's all these old ladies that are just absolute darlings. And they do talk to me, which is so nice because in so many other places I've just been ignored. And they look after my cats as well, like they'll feed them and they let them in the house. And they, they're absolutely lovely, but we don't really have conversations about anything, just the cats and the weather. One, one lady did have a fall and she told me about it and I, like, I felt a huge privilege of hearing that being said to me but then that's not privilege that's just like normal relationships in other countries like the uh, crossing guards here the there was a fella I don't see them very often because um, I'm usually not around when they're helping the kids cross the road but I, I walked past this fella and he said good morning to me and it touched my heart and I nearly cried because I was so happy that somebody was recognizing me as a human and then I realized that that's his job he, he has to say hello to me but the fact that he hadn't ignored me like and the fact that I have gotten to the point where I expect absolutely nothing is so devastating to me like common courtesy isn't really afforded to foreigners and I know that there are so many people that get it worse and especially with the situation in the world right now like I'm, I'm lucky that I'm physically safe you know but I just want to be treated like a human and you really not you're treated like an oddity here for so long I thought that I was the issue here and I have been on medication for a long time and I've still been so well. but since I lost my job I lost insurance as well so I can't take my medication anymore and I'm actually happier than I've ever been and I think it's because I was taken out of that toxic workplace environment I don't know that things will be better in Europe but I was talking to three friends who have recently and I don't say this lightly escaped Japan and they say how different it is just that they're treated like a human now so I I do have this hope that things will be better when I came to Japan I had just finished being a flight attendant so I always had a smile on my face I was confident and Japan's completely stolen that from me like um, because people stare at me or ignore me and even when I'm speaking regular Japanese to them, they, they'll just ignore me or pretend that they don't understand or literally don't understand because they're expecting something other than Japanese to come out of my mouth and having to repeat myself over and over. I've got to the point that I don't make eye contact with people because I don't want to have an interaction because they're very, very rarely positive. Body shaming is a huge issue here as well. Like when I was younger here, I was very skinny. I'm very, very tall, I'm six foot one and I weighed 62 kilos, which is pretty skinny for somebody of my height. And I was still told to lose weight by a boyfriend. I was still fat shamed. And so stopping drinking, I did it for comfort basically. I was drinking for comfort, but I replaced that with comfort eating. So now I am on the heavier side. I'm not obese, but I'm bigger, especially compared to Japanese people. I get fat shamed all the time. I can't buy clothes here. I have to order from abroad or make them. And I, in the UK, I, I want to just be a normal human that just fits in. Like I'll always be tall for somebody who's read as female, but at least I'll be able to buy clothes. On a slightly less personal and depressing note, there are so many things that are just very, very difficult to get done in Japan. And this sounds like a really weird complain, but it, it, it is quite difficult. So banks are only open from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. and ATMs close. And you have to go to the specific ATM of your bank. So I bank with Japan Post and with um, MUFG because MUFG is the only company in Japan that has a debit card the only company in japan that blows my mind everybody thinks japan is so high tech it is not it's still a cash-based society things have changed a little bit but not a lot and so if i need to transfer money i have to wait until the atm is open at 8 a.m and go and physically get money and this ha uh, happens every month when i need to pay my rent walk walk to my bank 200 yards away 
put money into another ATM and then send the money from that ATM. It's mind blowing. And there are days when the ATMs aren't open at all, like on um, national holidays, they're literally closed. Just closed, that's it, you can't get money. And you can't pay for stuff on card either. It's mind blowing. Everything has to be done in person and forms have to be filled in by hand. So for example, opening a bank account takes like three hours. And even if you cannot write Japanese, you have to write that form in Japanese. You have to sit and copy kanji for kanji what is written and it if you have to do that it's gonna take you four hours to do like I can write kanji fine and it still takes three hours another example when that co-worker broke my arm I accidentally left my phone on the train and this is one amazing thing about Japan like stuff doesn't tend to get stolen like that it will get handed in I am gonna make a positive video about Japan don't worry there are so many good things about Japan just today is a sad video because sad doll but um, yeah, so my, hand, my phone got handed in and I went to the station master and they explained it and they showed me my phone and I was like, oh my gosh, that's my phone. And I unlocked it with my fingerprint or something. And then I had to fill in this form. I've got a broken arm, right? And it's my dominant hand that's broken. They made me fill in the form in kanji with my left hand. <laughs> It's just ridiculous, ridiculous. Other than rent, Mr. Super Clear, and obviously my love Daiso, everything is super expensive. Like I don't eat fruit and veg here and nobody really eats a huge amount of fruit and veg here because it's just so expensive. The only thing I really eat is bananas because they're cheap everywhere for some reason. But I bought a 16th of a watermelon, you know how like a, a, it'll be cut, cut into an eighth. It was half of that. It cost me a dollar fifty, and that was reduced to half price. $1.50. Other than the reasons for me wanting to leave Japan being about Japan, I am looking forward to seeing my family in Europe again and having European Christmases because I swear there is nothing better than a European Christmas. Please don't think that I came into Japan ready to dislike Japan. I was a weeaboo and Japan crushed the weeaboo-ness out of me. I say to friends that I wish I was still a weeaboo because I'm pretty sure I would enjoy Japan more but it would just was totally taken from me. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Now back to the doll. I do absolutely love how she turned out. I think that this is how my particularly ever have to high dolls are going to be from the future. I, I think this is the style that I want to try and retain. And I did a commission recently and I think I did get this kind of result. I made a live stream about how to make clothing patterns which would be helpful if you're trying to make this type of clothing. I just made a regular t-shirt that I'm going to then make out of jersey with just a regular normal sleeve on them and some really simple blue shorts that I added a snap closure to the back of. I made a masking tape pan on top of the shirt of the collar that I want. It's important to do this over the shirt to make sure that it will fit on top of the shirt properly. If you're making clothing in layers, it's a really good idea to do the foundation layer and then make the pattern over the top of that to make sure that it will fit. You can do skirts, like full skirts, for example, for Lolita dresses first and then do the petticoat pattern after, but you might have to adjust where it sits on her waist. So if it's filling it too much, then you could lower it and put it on her hips.
Using the really light Daiso clay, I'm making the base for her ears. I'm using water to smooth those down and I put some pins inside them because I'm going to just stab them straight into her head later. I have no idea who these shoes originally belonged to but I just thought they were adorable. So I'm painting the ribbony top part red and then I'm going to paint the heels blue and underneath I painted the soles red as well just to match with her outfit. Body blushing. Using acrylic paint, I painted on the piping around the shirt and also the hat. I didn't film making the hat, but what I've got my hand on right now is the pattern that I used to make the hat. So the little petal pieces, um, I used four of those and sewed those into like a circle. You can see the hat is just above my hand that I've got the paintbrush in. If you do want to see me making a hat, then I can totally do one on live stream at some point. I cut some light brown yarn into tiny tiny pieces to make flocking and then after painting the ears with a base coat of brown I covered them in PVA glue and then I'm just patting them into that flocking to make them fluffy then leaving them to completely dry. I boil washed her hair before covering it to make sure that the parting lays the way I want but I'll still get a kink from that hair tie that I put her hair in earlier so I'm going to straighten her hair out before cutting it. Um, I do go back and straighten and cut and straighten just to make sure I've got the cut I want but make sure if you're cutting the hair get the kink out of it first. I received a doll from Space Neko a while ago and she's just a stunning doll but she has her nails painted and I never thought of doing that to a doll before um, uh, but I thought that this would look super cute on this doll because she's got kind of a pin-up vibe going I think. I cut some pieces of satin ribbon that I melted the edges of to make her necktie and then I put her back together and I'm so sad because she's so, so cute and I really regret giving her to that co-worker. That co-worker was super happy to receive the doll so that was nice and she had been in that horrible horrible abusive relationship so to try and kind of make that positive I guess it was kind of a nice thing to be able to do even if she wasn't kind to me. Please don't think that my spiel means that Japan is a bad place it just isn't the right fit for me. I don't necessarily expect much positivity in the comment section so I'm not sure that I'll read or reply to many comments for this doll but thank you always for your support and thank you for watching this doll honestly the support that I've received from my subscribers and from my followers has honestly and genuinely gotten me through a very very hard time here in Japan and I appreciate you all so much and I appreciate all of your continued support so hopefully I'll see you for the next one which will be much more positive <laughs>